Hello, everybody. Happy holidays. Welcome to another uh, Comic Source 12 Days of the Comic Source presenting Bad Idea. Happy holidays from Rocky and myself. We hope you're enjoying your holiday season with friends and family. Uh, maybe you're traveling, especially if it's the weekend before Christmas. You know, this comes out on Saturday. Christmas is on Monday. Maybe you got the long car ride. Got this plan, audio only. Maybe you got your phone there in the holder playing YouTube checking us out we appreciate you spending time with us uh this holiday season uh i mean i can't explain how much happiness y yeah it's it's a little bit of work you know but rocky and i we don't get paid for this we wouldn't do it if we didn't love it uh so i i really as we're winding down the year want to express you know how much we appreciate you guys supporting and watching us and listening and engaging you know we wouldn't do it if if, if you know nobody was out there listening uh, and the fact that we get to talk about comics and share them with you, especially a smaller publisher like this, Bad Idea, uh, it really means a lot. And obviously, I love Bad Idea. You know, I, I was fortunate enough to win the Bad Idea uh, Fan of the Year, the Fan Cup, the first uh, inaugural. We'll see if they do another one. Um, and so I've gotten to know a lot. You know, a lot of the bad some of the Bad Idea guys I knew before. Uh, but I, I know the community. I know the guys, and it's just it's so awesome to be able to have a hobby that you love like comics. Um, and then have people that you know and enjoy spending time with making those comics. And then to be able to come on here with my buddy Rocky and promote them and support them and have people watching it on YouTube and leaving comments and, you know, hitting me up on Twitter to talk about these books. It, it really means a lot. Like talk about having joy in the holiday season. This has really been bringing me joy, especially because Rocky's getting a chance to check out a lot of these books for the first time. And he's and he's digging them, right, Rock? That that's right. You know, it's funny. We're going to be reviewing a comic called uh, "Passive Aggressive" today, and uh, I got to say, I've been mostly uh, aggressive, as in aggressively happy with what I've been reading from the Bad Idea comics you've been showing me. And uh, since they came out back in 2021, I'm a little bit late to the Bad Idea uh, game. But man, I uh, you know, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, hopefully one of these days we'll get you out to San Diego Comic Con, the Bad Idea Tiki Party. Uh, if you go out there, everybody, I, I, I definitely encourage you to go to the bad idea panel, which may possibly get you into the bad idea Tiki party. If you have a first customer pin. So for those of you that don't know, whenever a bad idea, new comic comes out, uh, in stores, if you're the very first customer that gets in there the day of release and buys it, you get a first customer pin and you're like, Oh, that's, that's too hard. I can't do that. There's no bad idea shop near me. What have you. The other way you can get a first customer pin is whenever Bad Idea runs one of their Kickstarter campaigns, if you pledge within the first 24 hours, guess what? First customer pin gets you into that Bad Idea Tiki Party. Uh, and there is a Kickstarter going on right now. Uh, unfortunately, it's no longer the first 24 hours. In fact, there's only about 24 hours left. Uh, the campaign ends about midday on Sunday, midday on, on uh, Christmas Eve. It's for save now. There's a link in the show notes. Uh, Rocky's had a chance to uh, read some of the uh, B-sides, the backups that Bad Idea puts in some of their books. Uh, so he, he knows what Save Now is about, this guy who has the ability to basically save a point in his life and then rewind the rest of the world, the rest of the time, go back, try to do things differently uh, the next time. It's, it's a fantastic idea. Gorgeous art from Thomas Giarello. Matt Kent is the writer. So that campaign's going on right now. If you're listening to us on Saturday, you only have a day left. Go and check it out. There's a lot of tears. Um, you can get the uh, physical book, you can get a hardcover original art. There's tons of great rewards. So definitely go and, uh, and take it, uh, and check it out. So as Rocky said, we're going to be, uh, reviewing passive aggressive today, also written by Matt Kent, uh, art by David Lapham. Now, uh, uh, some of the B sides that, uh, we've been reading are set in sort of the hero trade world uh, of bad idea. If there's any sort of shared universe that bad idea has, it is this idea of hero trade. If you're going, why does Hero Trade sound familiar? So bad idea about a month or so before their first book was going to be released, ENIAC, which we reviewed on the first day of Christmas, bad idea sent this Hero Trade to comic shops. And they didn't say it was from bad idea. It had a letter that just said, hey, can you check out my, my comic? Uh, you know, maybe put it out to sell or what have you. Didn't tell them it was written by Matt Kent. Maybe some people didn't recognize, I think most people didn't recognize it was David Lapham art. And the news didn't come out till later that this was technically Bad Idea's first release. Now, if you don't know comic shops, they get a lot of these kind of pirated looking comics, right? These self-published books. So a lot of shops, including my own, threw it away, just threw it in the garbage. So it was very limited. And uh, I think a 9.8 of the original Hero Trade 
goes for thousands of dollars i think yeah it's it's, it's, it's always on the collectible it's on uh all the all the various uh collector sites it's it's there yeah it's it's worth some money for sure yeah so uh, they have reprinted it as a b-side uh and they reprinted it for some of the kickstarter campaigns um so people have had a chance to read it but the whole premise is that um there's a hero called captain fabulous that somehow is incapacitated or killed and some kind of average joe has him in the trunk of his car and he's cutting off parts of him and selling, selling them, selling his blood, selling an arm, selling a leg for people to, to uh, like his bones. I think there's one bad, uh, one B side where the people were grinding up their bone, his bones and selling it as, as like a drug and people would sniff it and have like this euphoric, euphoric reaction. Um, so stories like that. Uh, so David Lapham, Matt Kent, I don't know if passive and aggressive is set in that same world. I kind of think maybe it is. Because obviously it has the same look with David Lapham writing it, but uh, I'm not sure. But it sort of feels like it would belong in that in that world. So the other thing that's interesting, talk about guerrilla marketing with this hero trade. What Bad Idea did with Passive Aggressive that they didn't let people know about is there's actually two one shots here. One is passive and one is aggressive. We didn't know that. We didn't know that Bad Idea just released it. They didn't tell anybody. And then the Wednesday it was released. People started talking about it and being like, okay, wait, how come when I open up the inside cover, one says aggressive and you open the inside cover, the other it says passive. And the story was actually different. And if you lived in a certain place, it was, it was very hard to get your hands on both locally. Cause what they did was some States got the aggressive version and some States got the passive version. So I think, <laughs> um, I think Arizona got the aggressive version. And I remember ordering, um, from Midtown Comics, actually, the passive version, so I could so I could have both and read the story. Now I say they're two different stories, but here's the thing: it's it's the same events, it's the same events, but one of the stories, I guess you'd say, is from an aggressive point of view, and one is from a, a passive point of view. So, kind of the um, the general idea of the story is there's this vigilante superhero, kind of think of him as a, a cross between like Batman and the Punisher. He, he's called the Watch. He's very violent. He's got billions of dollars like Bruce Wayne, but he totally kills people like the Punisher. Uh, and he's totally <laughs> obsessive like Batman. So uh, there's a flashback in the book where his mom died from overdose. Um, like laying in, Obviously, he was rich because uh, it's in a big mansion. Whenever it sees him going into his mom's room, she's passed out there on the bed uh, or, or dead laying on the bed. And she's got a bottle of pills in her hand and the pills are spilling out on the floor, much like the pearls that fall to the you know the ground in in uh, <laughs> yeah. that Batman origin yeah. we've all seen a billion yeah. times. So she, but she yeah. overdosed on oxycotton. So even when the watch is taking out people, and it shows how violent he is, he's killing a couple guys at the beginning of uh, aggressive that are just spray painting, and he calls them pushers and says they're selling drugs. He's like, what are you talking about? We're just protesting. He doesn't care. He, you know, to him, every he's like, oh, you're pushing your agenda. You're pushing your ideas. Everybody's a pusher. Uh, because again, he's obsessive. It's the whole drug. He's thing. like a hammer. Everything's a nail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Rocky. That's a great way to put it. So, uh, so yeah, this guy's a bad, a bad dude. Um, and he gets his billions stolen. Uh, his bank calls and says, Hey, this rushing hacking farm, uh, stole all your money. Don't worry. We'll get it back. But just so you know, in the meantime, you, you don't have any money. Um, and so he's like, who, who did this? And they're like, don't worry. We'll get to the bottom of it. He's like, oh, whoever will pay. And the bank's like, no, no, don't worry about it. Don't take matters in your own hands. You'll get your money back. And he hangs up on him. You know, obviously they don't know that he's the watch. <clears throat> so he goes to Russia, he tracks them down and just murders everybody, just blows them all away, uh, kills them all. Everybody at the hacking farm, everybody at the criminal organization that sort of runs the hacking farm gets his money plus extra. And at the end, he's sitting, sitting on a beach with his assistant saying, ah, I got my billions back. Plus they had more. I'll put that money to good use. You know, life has a funny way of working out. You know, like maybe this was a, a cloud with a silver lining. So that's the passive, or that's the aggressive story and very, and very aggressive and gorgeous David Lapham art. Uh, I, I don't remember the last time I saw David Lapham do like this much action. And I can only imagine if it was colored because there's brains, flying, blood flying everywhere in this book. <laughs> now for the passive side, it's the same story, but it's told through the uh, perspective of this kid who works at the Russian hacking farm and the girl that he kind of has a crush on. So he's just a teenage kid. He's sort of trapped into this life of working at this Russian hacking farm. He has a crush on the girl next to him. 
He wants to get out. He's the one that actually creates a, an algorithm that runs in the background and steals all the money from him. He's like, oh yeah, this guy's like on the Fortune 500 Forbes list or whatever. One of the richest guys in America will steal his money. We'll escape. We'll get you know we'll get out. So it's it's totally his fault. But he, you know inadvertently he doesn't realize he's stealing the money from the watch. And when he realizes it, he's like, oh crap. They try to go on the run. Um, she gets killed in the crossfire. He ends up on that same beach. He escapes with the money. He ends up on that same beach, uh, just distraught, while behind him, lounging uh, on the beach, are uh, the watch and his assistant. So it's a very interesting story. You kind of feel bad for the kid. You know, he was just trying to, to, to have a better life and, you know, to get out from under the thumb of these, um, these criminals who were constantly threatening to kill him and, you know, the girl that he liked and, you know, forcing him to be slave labor, work 20 hours a day, that sort of thing. So you feel bad, you know, he fell into it under bad circumstances or what have you, but he clearly made a horrible choice and uh, he barely escapes with his life as well. So a really interesting idea for Matt Kent and great for David Lapham to draw it the way he does. There are some scenes that are almost identical in the comics, uh, you know, just drawn from a little bit of a different perspective because at, at one point after the watch has has completed his mission and he's about to drive away. Um, he, that guy, that kid on, it comes walking up to, uh, he wasn't there at the time he was late and he comes walking up to the place where the hacking farm is just as the watch is coming out and unbeknownst to the kid, uh, the criminal organization was on to him that he'd been doing this thing behind their back and they were about to kill him. Um, and just as he's about to be killed, the watch sees that guy and he was on his list, this guy with a scar on his face. And he actually takes out that hitman that was about to kill the kid and saves the kid's life. The watch not knowing that it was the kid's fault all along. So the kid barely escapes his life. And then, like I said, ends up on the same beach. So they, they almost meet. They, they definitely cross paths. Uh, but the two protagonists of these stories almost meet. Uh, and then they almost meet again on the beach at the end. So just an awesome idea, fun story, action packed. And uh, I think that'll always stand out to be Whenever I read this, it just reminds me of the insanity, how Bad Idea fans went crazy. Like, what? There's two different versions? People were like on the Bad Idea Facebook group going, hey, can you go pick me up the other one? And they, people were trading back and forth, everything. It was it was a good time. Uh, but it's a great story. Uh, and I do I do recommend you uh, checking it out. It shows the strength of David Lapham's storytelling. Uh, a lot of these black and white ones do that. Because I feel like in black and white, um, the storytelling is just a little more clear sequentially. Um, cause everything, even mood has to be conveyed with the line work. You don't have the colors to, to fall back on. So, um, which one did you read first, Rocky? I read the, I read them in the order that, that, that I received them. So I read, I read the aggressive one first. Gotcha. And, uh, so it was interesting cause when I, when I read the aggressive one first, it was, you know, it, it very much felt like this guy named the watch. It was like, sort of like, he's a, he's like a Frank Miller Batman only with, without the moral c compass or without the code against killing. And, he, and, uh, he's even kind of an asshole to his, uh, his, his female butler. He even at one point even suspects his female butler of, of robbing him of $8.1 billion. And then, and he's just, he's just, you know, and he's really the guy, he, he knows he's been hacked. He doesn't know by who the bank tells him that he's insured. So he's guaranteed guaranteed his money back. He doesn't have to go ape shit and around the world looking for it, but of course he does. And of course he goes on this, this worldwide, basically this rampage and ultimately ends up, uh, ends up, you know, yeah, wiping out the, what they call the hacker farm. He, he destroys the hacker farm. He goes back. He's got all his money. He's even got more money because what, what the hackers had, he ends up with, or uh, he ends up with a little bit more because he gets the insurance money plus what some of what he encountered. And so it, when I'm, when I'm looking at um, what, when I'm, when I went to read the passive side and then I meet the, the computer hacker himself who, who did all this. <laughs> and uh, that was interesting because, you know, he, the, the, this hacker guy, it, it's interesting, even the way that you described it, which, which, you know, I mean, both these people ended up billionaires. I mean, the, the 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 guy who made a billionaire and the hacker guy you described him almost like like you know like we should feel sorry for him and i'm gonna give you a counterpoint and say i don't feel sorry for him at all i mean he's passive yes but guess what by being passive he ended up with just as much money as the aggressive guy so in a sense he won he won too i mean he ended up with money 
but but Rocky, you can't put a price on love, man. He lost his girl. <laughs> Well, which is also funny, right? Well, like he, I think maybe you can. I mean, how much did he love her really? $8.1 billion versus love of your life. Come on. I mean, yeah, no. he doesn't even know. Yeah, to be fair, he doesn't even know. He even mentions, you know, run away with me. Try it out. If you don't like it, you can take off. Half the money's yours. He doesn't even know. I mean, it's not like yeah. they're actually together. He just has a crush on her. But yeah. it is kind of funny. You know, she dies uh, when the watch attacks the hacker farm, but he doesn't yeah. even kill them all. Perfect. Like, he throws a, a thing of an explosive device in there with tear gas and it blows up and poisons most of the people. He's like, oh, I made the tear gas too strong. I mean, he doesn't care. Yeah. But it's like, you made the tear gas too strong? Really? That's how you wipe yeah. out these innocent people? But, you I mean, know, innocent, it, they're working for a Russian hacking farm. They're not re- truly innocent. That, I think that's part of the part of the hidden the hidden themes and the, the hidden, I won't say it's genius, but it's, it's kind of clever. I'll call it clever. The whole idea that we, we all have passive aggressive sides and, and it's interesting that how much we can accomplish, we can accomplish the same thing passively or aggressively. Sometimes being passive is more effective. Sometimes being aggressive is more effective, but often you can achieve the same goals. And now arguably, maybe sometimes you can't, sometimes you have to be more passive. You have to be more passive. Sometimes you have to be more aggressive. What's interesting here is that we got extremes, but yet with the same Arguably the, the the same result here, and I'm not sure. Yeah, you know this per passive guy lost his girlfriend, uh, which which is uh, which I guess is terrible. <laughs> but it's um, it, it's interesting how things work out because it, it, I find it interesting that the passive guy and the aggressive guy both of them survived, and it's almost like they're they're the same person, but one's one's really obviously represents the aggressive side one represents the passive side neither one of them can die because they're really they're they're working in conjunction with each other but yet they don't know it and without each of them they wouldn't have had that adventure and it's and i I like the fact that it's like watching a movie where you get the perspective of, of two different characters or you know you watch half the movie from one perspective and then the remaining half from the other perspective and you say ah so that's what happened and so it, it was clever. I, I thought it was well done. And maybe I'm overthinking it a little bit, but I, I had fun with this. It, it was good. And I, I agree with you that the black and white, I was surprised how well the black and white style worked and how, uh, how it worked very well, particularly for the expressions and especially the, the anger and the, and the <laughs> debauchery-like attitude of the, uh, of the watch uh, versus the, uh, this very passive guy who ends up with $8.1 billion. And I just want to say, the last page on, on passive, this guy has this attractive woman walk behind him, and he's still moping. He's got $8.1 million, billion in the bank account. He's on a beach, and he's not, you know, I mean, I, I say give him another two or three days. He'll forget about his lost love, and he'll be, he'll be well on his way to having a real great life. Yeah, I think he's still in shock. Because again, I mean, it's not like the, he ever kissed her or they went on a date or anything. It was it was a yeah. crush. It was it was a crush. I'm not not to un, you know not to undersell it. But he did you know he did almost die and uh, you know he when he went in there to and found her body and then he got attacked by one of the other guys who before he succumbed uh, to the poison. So yeah, uh, there is a, a B side that's in here and the B side is a hundred percent in the world of hero trade. It's the same B side for both. Uh, it's called Erasure, and as far as I know, it's the only hero trade uh, story that's not been drawn by uh, David Lapham. The art in the in the backup, which is obviously it's hero trade, so it's written by Matt Kent, but the art is by Cl- uh, Klaus Johnson, uh, and it's fantastic. And it tells a story of uh, this criminal organization that's set up in cells of four. So if somebody goes down, the most people from the organization they can take out with them is is three, uh, and it's this guy who's tr- trying to figure a way out of it uh kind of this low life guy that self-described low life guy and what the realization he comes to after he's taken out um his three the three other people in his cell his three partners if you will uh it's kind of tragic in a way but uh but i really enjoyed that as well any thoughts on the backup rock uh i i actually i actually like the art a little bit better i like the black and white art a little bit better and i really like the style with the with the with the letter boxes being in sort of like a dark almost like blood red uh, not quite, you know, anyways, I thought it was, I, I thought it, 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 uh, I thought it was very effective. I really liked it. It, it reminded me a little bit of, uh, uh, actually reminded me a little bit of reading, uh, Frank Miller, uh, the, uh, uh, 
like the three, the original black and white Frank Miller, uh, when it was 300 and, uh, some of the, Sin uh, City. what do you call it? Sin City. It reminded me a yeah. little bit of, it had a Sin City feel to it, especially the lead character, not as grim and gritty, but I, I liked it. I, I and I thought it was, I thought it was a good story. It had some tragedy to it and, you know, a good amount of violence. I, so I thought, I thought it was very effective. Yeah. I think Klaus Janssen is, um, is underrated as a penciler. Uh, yeah. you know, he, he's mostly known as an inker. He has done some issues of Punisher. I know that, that. Yeah, and he's worked with Frank Miller too, hasn't he? He didn't, he didn't oh, yeah. he work with oh, Frank yeah. Miller on uh, Ronin or something. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's done a ton of work with Frank Miller. He, I mean, he's been, yeah. he's been around for, I want to say like 40 years. Yeah. Ish. Um, so he, yeah, he's worked with a lot of people. I wish he would do more. He, he and he's super humble. He does he guy doesn't realize what a legend he is. He doesn't realize how, how good he is. So I, I'm glad that, um, Dinesh and company over at bad idea were able to get him on board to, uh, to do that story. It's fantastic. So, uh, anyway, that's going to do it for this episode. Everybody we will be back tomorrow to talk about burning man, uh, from Peter Milligan with art by Juan Jose reap. Uh, it's a fantastic story. Uh, I can't wait for Rocky to check it out. So once again, we want to wish you happy holidays. Hope you all get a chance to get out and see Aquaman this weekend or in the upcoming week. Uh, I know a lot of people are off between, uh, Christmas and new year. So, um, you know, go with the family, enjoy it. Uh, let's support DC and show them that we want more great DC movies. Uh, yeah, happy holidays. And we appreciate y'all spending some time with us. Uh, anything to add Rocky? Uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, happy holidays to everyone. Uh, I, I want to extend my thanks to everyone who listens to us to, uh, listen to, uh, Jason and I be passive and aggressive at times and rant and rave and argue with each other and talk comic books. So it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it was a good year, and I think this year is going to end on some, on a, on a higher note. And looking forward to twenty twenty four. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, okay, everybody, don't forget uh, you want to listen to us rant passively or aggressively. Be sure you subscribe to Rocky's YouTube channel, Comic Space Boom Exclamation Point. That's where our DC Spotlight drops every Tuesday. We talk about all the DC books for the most part. Uh, you can also subscribe to the Comic Source uh, if you like audio only. Uh, just go to wherever you get your podcast and uh, do a search for the comic source and subscribe. So uh, again, we appreciate you all joining us and we'll see you for the next one tomorrow. Catch you later.